5th, 2010. Roll call, Madam Secretary. Yes, sir. Mr. Andropont will be a little late. He had a doctor's appointment at 4.30 this afternoon. Mr. Brame? Here. Mr. Collins? Here. Mr. Farnham? Here. Mrs. Griffin? Present. President Guidry? Here. Mr. Landry? Probably so. Dr. Mackey? Present. Mr. McMillan? Here. Mr. Scott? Here. Mr. Spell? Here. Mr. Stelly? Here. Mr. Sias? Present. Mrs. Trimmy is in Houston this evening. Uh, Chairman Hassan? Here. You do have a quorum. Thank you. Before we begin, I'd like to recognize Mayor Randy Roach. Thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity to be with you tonight, and I'm regretting that I wasn't able to be with you last Thursday night when you had uh, your proclamations and whereases and all those things that were, were being done. I was in uh, Indiana uh, with uh, my grandchildren and uh, spending time with them. So we had, a, we had, a, um, had to kind of have a, a little bit of a uh, double duty there. But, um, but I kind of wanted to be here tonight. And I want to say a couple of things before I get to my, my official uh, whereas in proclamation that I have here. Because uh, I, I know that we, uh, last, last week we gave a proclamation to, um, in honor of Mark, and I, I wasn't able to be here to present that. So I want to just kind of just say to Mark how much I appreciate uh, the opportunity to work with you. And uh, I know that uh, the parish is going to miss you, and I know that uh, your family is going to welcome you and be glad to have you a little bit more at home, a little bit more available. Uh, and I see him back here in the audience, Ann, uh, and your son. Uh, but, um, but I appreciate your work for all of us. And I know we've had our, our issues at times. Um, but I am reminded of someone told me this a long time ago. It says, wisdom is born of disagreement. Yeah. And uh, so I think we've done some good things together as a parish. And I think that uh, we've always kept in mind that it's the people that we serve. And that's what we're here for. And I know that's what you're here for. And, uh, and I really do appreciate uh, all the work that, that we've been able to accomplish over the years. And I know that uh, this parish uh, is uh, where it is today, in large part because of the sacrifices and the work that you have, have done on behalf of all the people of us. And I appreciate that very much. Um, but last week, uh, we, have, we issued our proclamation in honor of, of, um, of Mark. And I wanted to come and do one in honor of Colleen. Oh. And so I have a, a whereas, and if you would allow me to, I'd like to, to read this one. Uh, this says, whereas Mrs. Colleen Clark will retire from the Calcasieu Parish Police Jury, effective April 22nd, 2010, as Executive Secretary to Mark McMurray, Parish Administrator. And whereas Mrs. Clark has worked for the Calcasieu Parish Police Jury since 1977 and assumed the duties of Executive Secretary while working for then Parish Administrator Mr. Rodney M. Vincent, and whereas over the past 33 years, Mrs. Clark has demonstrated grace under pressure and has always conducted herself in a professional manner, while at the same time having a unique ability to manage the day-to-day -day matters within the public arena in a way that made the people feeling who needing parish services feel valued and appreciated. And whereas Mrs. Clark has helped, according to uh, calculations here, 77 members of the police jury over the past 33 years to access parish services and effectively meet the needs of their constituents and has been a key player in helping Calcasieu Parish Police Jury achieve a reputation as one of the most progressive and effective in the state. And whereas Mrs. Clark has always promptly and professionally responded to requests for assistance in issues involving the city of Lake Charles and the police jury and even handled many of those requests personally without the need of any follow-up and cut checks under Mark's name without hesitation. <laughs> <laughs> Take that off the video. <laughs> and whereas Mrs. Clark's professional skills have been recognized by others across the state, and she was elected to serve as president of the Organization of Parish Administrative Officials of the Police Jury Association of Louisiana. Now, therefore, I hereby proclaim Thursday, April 22nd, as the Colleen L. Clark Retirement Day in the city of Lake Charles in honor, appreciation, and commendation of the many contributions that she has made to the citizens of our great city. Colleen, this one is for you.
Speech, speech. <laughs> and I have one more proclamation. This one is in honor of, I mean, no. <laughs> I said I was going to say it's in honor of Hal McMillan, but we'll get to that one next week, okay? But thank you all for letting me do this. I appreciate it very much. Thank you, Mayor. Item number three, consideration of making a recommendation with reference to adopting an ordinance establishing general provisions and conditions for culvert installations within Calcasieu Parish and fees related thereto. Mr. West Crane. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the committee, um, what you have before you tonight on this particular item, uh, and my name is Wes Crane, I'm the Assistant Director of Development for the Planning Department. Um, the purpose of this item is to uh, actually take your existing guidelines for culverts and convert them into uh, an actual codified ordinance. Um, and what this does, this, this actually will provide a more legally enforceable document for us. Uh, uh, you know, this, the, the guidelines were adopted back in uh, uh, May of 2001, and uh, they, they were su subsequently revised by, uh, in January of 06. And <clears throat> our office has been issuing permits for culverts since uh, 2007. And so we just felt like... Uh, you know, this would give us something that, that uh, with a little bit more teeth in it, uh, if it was codified, so that in case there were problems out there with enforcement, we, we would be able to, uh, uh, to cite them as we do with most of our other ordinances that we have and get some compliance. So uh, the process in which we have gotten here today, basically, is we, we've had held meetings with our planning and liaison group uh, regarding this and uh, as well as the members of our staff and uh, members of the engineering and public work staff uh, and subsequent to that we we basically uh, the consensus of that group was to move forward they voted to move forward with uh, introducing this to the uh, to y'all in the full jury for adoption uh, before you, uh, I think there's an attachment in your folder uh, of the actual proposed ordinance. One of the noted changes that we did make in that particular ordinance uh, is, is under <coughs> section section 2211, and I think it's on the third page of that uh, proposed ordinance. It is a provision to allow for temporary culverts. Um, and under that uh, section, uh, there, there's about 11, uh, I'm sorry, uh, A through E. And I'll briefly just go through and what we did. We felt like one of the issues we were having is, is um, without this provision, people were having to install uh, their new culverts uh, during the uh, course of construction and with heavy traffic, heavy trucks, uh, a lot of times those culverts would break and they would have to go back and replace those. So we felt like that there was uh, a need for a provision in here to allow for temporary culverts. So during the course of that construction and once they were, the, uh, the construction was completed, uh, they would remove those and put in, in, in the, uh, the actual uh, permanent culvert. There was also a provision for uh, farmers and logger, uh, logging companies, uh, land clearing, those folks that actually uh, just needed to get on their property for, on a temporary basis to do that. Um, and, then, and then they would you know, be able to remove those. Uh, if you go through A uh, and under that particular section, A is the applicability, which I mentioned before, is for new construction, farming, and logging, and land clearing uh, type uses. Uh, there's a provision for the permits and, and fees. Uh, we felt like that um, a $50 fee was, was uh, fair. Uh, the, the permanent 
uh, culvert fee is $100 at this time, so we felt like $50 was good for that. And then the standards would be uh, for a minimum of a 16-gauge metal pipe. Uh, the time frame, uh, especially for farming, logging, and land clearing would be uh, 120 days, which is four months. We would also have a provision in there that would allow the staff to grant an extension of another four months. So that's an eight-month uh, deal. And then anything beyond that, they'd have to come back to the jury. For the new construction, like homes and things like that, commercial buildings, uh, we would allow for the temporary culvert to stay there through the, the course of construction, to, through the completion of the construction, and then they would have to install the, the actual permanent uh, culvert. And then obviously there's a provision in there for uh, violation and penalties. Uh, that's really the, uh, what we're asking for tonight is, is, to, is, is for you to consider, uh, take this under advice, consider this, and eventually adopt this as an ordinance. Um, one other thing that uh, during the course of the meetings uh, with the planning and li liaison group, uh, uh, Mr. Les Fornham uh, brought up a request to, uh, for a provision for plastic pipe to be used under uh, uh, the driveways. And I also handed out to you a, an amendment reflecting that request, and Les can uh, speak on behalf of that. Uh, and if there's any questions, I'll be glad to try to answer those questions. Anyone on the committee have any questions of Mr. Crane? I'd like to make a motion to discuss. We have a motion to discuss. Second. A second. Go ahead, Mr. Horn. All right. Uh, I brought this forward about probably about a year ago about the possibility of putting plastic culverts underneath <coughs> driveways on, on anybody's property. And, uh, and we had several meetings over the past couple of years to discuss this. And uh, from my understanding, staff is pretty comfortable with it as long as it meets the same guidelines as what the state requires, which is uh, uh, some rock compaction underneath the culvert as well as on the sides and on the top of it. You know, I, I think we're at a point where we need to allow some homeowners some options if it's possible. We allow plastic pipes and complete subdivisions where they absolutely know where the driveway is going to be before they ever start. So there's kind of a double standard going on right now. I think we owe it to the citizens to give everybody that same option if we can. Now, some folks can, can uh, set their own culverts. We allow that in our uh, specifications right now, but the average homeowner can't set a piece of concrete cover himself. It's just impossible. They don't have the means to do that. So uh, I just would, uh, I would make a recommendation that we add this uh, little section to it and allow this for the uh, average homeowner to have that option if it's available to them. Thank you, Mr. Farnham. Mr. Spell. Thank you, uh, <coughs> Mr. Chairman. Uh, to my colleague, Mr. Farnham, <clears throat> Mr. Farnham, would you be willing I do have concerns about the stability of plastic pipe. However, I do understand the intent of trying to provide the public with options. My only concern, and uh, I will have a question for Mr. Crane, but uh, we do have here as part of the amendment, plastic pipe failures due to improper installation shall be replaced immediately by and at the expense of the property owner. Failure to comply will be a violation of this section. Um, are you open to considering that uh, this will be disclosed at transfer or of ownership or sale of the property uh, to the uh, person purchasing or new owner so that that waiver continues throughout the ownership of the property? Yeah. Go ahead. I, absolutely. I, I really think that the, that the driveway ought to be the responsibility of the homeowner throughout the life of that property. I, that's my personal opinion about it. Go ahead, um, I, I'm personally I'm willing to support this. However, my only concern is is that um, uh, plastic pipe. It's absolutely critical that it is installed uh, appropriately according to specifications. Otherwise, there will be problems with joints and failures. 
Uh, so the installation of the base material uh, and backfilling is critical. I do agree with giving people options. Uh, I'm okay with supporting this, but I would like to see that that waiver <coughs> is, is transferred upon sale uh, of the property or transfer of ownership. Um, my question for Mr. Crane, um, if we have a piece of property and uh, the owner chooses without knowledge of where their driveways will be and chooses to cover frontage with plastic pipe, and at some point in time, zoning of that property has changed to say an I-1, I-2 designation, and now you have heavy traffic that will be transferring across that. Is there anything that we have to kind of catch that and require any modifications that would be necessary for a different loading requirement? Uh, that's a good question, uh, Mr. Spell. I, I would probably have to defer to our engineering department, uh, you know, to look into that to see if we there would be some sort of review of that, you know, once a project was uh, considered on that piece of property, if there was rezoning to a, uh, like a heavy industrial, um, uh, that yeah, we'd have to look into that. I would think, and I would defer to our, to our engineer, Mr. Connor. something we'd be glad to look into um, I would say you know just off the cuff I don't know that it would need to be changed out depends on the type of driveway they have and the amount of cover there may not be any need to change that pipe out plastic pipe may work fine but uh, um, we'd be glad to look into that further and get back with you if you'd like I guess my only concern that there's a safety net or um, a trigger or a check balance system that if that happens, something is triggered on our side to investigate whether it's suitable or not. It's not so much as trying to address it in this amendment, but just if that situation occurs, something's triggered on our side that we look at that and address if upgrades are necessary. Sure. <clears throat> well, let me just say, we, we actually, if something like that happened, it's going to go through our development review committee. And, you know, of course, yeah. Tim and them are on that committee with us. And so, you know, that's something that we could look at in that committee. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Spill. Mr. Smith. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, let me address your first concern, if I may, please, uh, Mr. Spell. I think the wording covers what you're uh, interested in. This says that plastic pipe failures due to improper installations mm -hmm. shall be replaced immediately by and at the expense of property owner. That's whomever is the property owner at that time. If it's the developer who still owns it before he sells it, if it's the initial person who moves in, or if it's several uh, purchases down the line, I think this would cover it. Now, it, the, the only little trick is installation fa uh, failure. Yeah. Um, it may be a failure just from time and the, imp uh, the, the properties of that particular pipe, but I think we could work with this and just put plastic pipe failures and not not put due to improper installation because it fails it should be the owner's responsibility to take care of that anyway thank you mr smith may i respond ahead, mr. mr chairman um very good point thank you mr smith uh i i would be in favor of that little change in wording on failures um but the intent, or I guess my concern, is I have run into several instances of property owners that had an issue with their driveway culverts and there was a problem before they purchased and it was not disclosed to them. I, so I guess my main concern is I want to make sure that somebody goes and buys a house, that there is a legal responsibility that the person that owns that discloses the fact that they are responsible for that driveway culvert maintenance. Not sure that we can pass anything that would require disclosure. Uh, there are many, many laws that affect property transactions, and uh, it really is the uh, responsibility of the buyer and the seller to work that out through their attorneys or doing whatever they need to do. 
But this this ordinance would be on the books, and the responsibility would belong to whomever that property owner is at the time it fails. Okay. Whether Thank they you. know it or not, I'm sorry to say. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Spell. Mr. Stelly. Let's mention something about the subdivisions having plastic culverts. Since this ordinance passed with concrete culverts, the new subdivisions yeah. have concrete culverts, correct? Um, what subdivisions recently developed have plastic culverts? I'm not sure. Maybe Jimmy might be able to answer something. We had a housing development that was off South Beglas Parkway. Uh, and, and what they did was is they covered all the ditches uh, with, with plastic pipe, which was engineered. That was standard, though. What, in, in the, isn't that what's in the ordinance? If you cover the ditch in front of your home, you can use plastic covers. That, that is That's correct. That's yes, correct. So there was nothing, there was no problem there. That was done correctly. Right, and it was, it was completely engineered by a professional engineer. If I may, Les, what subdivision are you talking about that has plastic? This was Renoir, I think, Estates. Mammoth, go right ahead. He is correct. It was Renoir subdivision. Every front footage of the property was covered with plastic pipe, including the driveways. And the driveway installations were known ahead of time because all the houses were built all at the same time. And that's just where, where I'm running into problems. I've got people in my district that can't understand why they can't put plastic pipe in front of their house when we allowed an entire subdivision to be put in. Mr. Stelling? Jimmy, that was, is that correct? Even under the driveways in this subdivision, the plastic pipe was put in? Yes. It was, put in, it was by yes. error? Yes. But, well, not by error. It was double reinforced. That's the way it was submitted on the plans. And like I said, it was completely engineered. And it was reviewed by us. And, you know, I guess, um, you know, it's less maintenance, obviously, for us if everything's covered. We don't have to go in and cut grass and, and that type of thing. And they didn't want to have any open ditches to, to, to deal with sewer. In fact, they're actually tied into the City of Sulphur's wastewater treatment. Mm -hmm. if, if this passes, um, naturally they're going to have to make application, but then we're going to inspect the type of pipe that's put in there. And you say there's a standard. Uh, minimum uh, specifications. Um, we're going to make sure that the pipe that's put in there is the good reinforced pipe, <coughs> not the pipe that Abs you buy at the dollar. Absolutely. Absolutely. We will do that. Okay. <coughs> yes. Mr. Stelly, are you that's through? It. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Great. Ms. Griffin. Uh, thank you, sir. I, I just have one question. I'm in agreement with this. Uh, my question is, what are you designating as immediately? What will that be? Upon e inspection, oh, yeah. a we'll day of, a week? A, uh, a, what, give me a time frame for your word, immediately, in reference to the improper installations. Well, I think... <clears throat> If the owner knows that there's a failure in the pipe, uh, they would certainly need to do that immediately. If, if we have a complaint or somebody calls us and we have to go out there and inspect it and we, we contact the owner and they don't do anything, we, we'll give them so many days to do that. That's, That's what in I the want order. Here. Yes. So many working days? There'll be so many days in order for. Just like any of our other ordinances, we give them so many days in order to get that done. When we say immediate, if they know that there's a failure, they should do it immediately. But there is a provision for your violations and penalties under the, the Code of Ordinances where, yes, if we have to notify them, then we do have to give them so many days to be able to comply with that. Uh, as long as they know what immediately is and they, you know, fall in that time frame. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Griffin. Mr. Landry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm not for it at all. I'm going to tell you why. <clears throat> There's nothing wrong with what we got. I mean, it works fine. We had problems before when they were doing plastering and all these other things. Since we went to the concrete, we hadn't had any problems. Okay. We want to give people options. I want to give them an option, too, if it makes sense. But if they, in which we, we talked about this in our little committee meeting, 
if they do it the right way, which is what's going to be required because we're going to make sure that they do it the right way, it's not going to be any cheaper. Not one bit cheaper. Is that correct? That's pretty much what our research By, by the time they, they put all the foundation there before they put buy this plastic pipe and do it the right way, they're not going to save any money. So what's the point? We just waste an ink printing new ordinances. I mean, you know, you give them a choice. You won't give them a choice for a reason. Well, here's a choice because you're going to save money. If you give them a choice, they're not going to save any money. I guess they're happy because they got to buy plastic, but there's, to me, there's no point in doing that. If we've researched it and, and have confirmed the fact that they're not going to save any money, why go to the plastic when we know the concrete works? The subdivision that's got the plastic shouldn't have the plastic. I would have never okayed that. I don't think we should have done that. Man, that's my opinion, you know, and I, of course, this subdivision, the developer, whoever did it, they did it the right way. I don't know why the guy, I mean, I guess if he was doing plastic everywhere else, maybe it made sense to go ahead and do it on the driveway as well, but he spent all that extra money and made sure that it was done right. Uh, also in our meeting, Mr. Connor, would you come up here? I got a question for you. I'm going to ask you this again. <laughs> <laughs> I asked you a question the other day. You, you're an engineer. You're building a house. What you going to put under your driveway? You you got your choice. You're going to put your plastic or you're going to put the concrete. Which one are you going to put? I have concrete under my driveway. All right, let's say you was going to build a new house. Which one would you pull? Would you put under the driveway? <laughs> I don't want to put you on the spot, but I'm going to anyway. I'd probably put concrete unless somebody gave me plastic. <laughs> right. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe your new neighbor would be in the plastic <laughs> pipe business and going to give you some. <laughs> so I agree there shouldn't be a double standard. That subdivision, that's a whole, you know, kind of a different thing. I just, why go away from what we know that has worked when we had all the problems before with the plastic? And, you, and you, sometimes you got to kind of protect people. And to me, we protect them. They're going to get into this thing and think that they're going to save some money by going with plastic. By the time we get through inspecting it and all that, they then they're going to be halfway into it. We hadn't really done them any service, I don't think. They're going to end up spending as much money or more, especially when we make them redo it. it that just doesn't make sense. I, I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Landry. Mr. Vickers, just a, just a clarification. This is not the only subdivision. If a developer does a subdivision and he chooses before he starts selling, the, as he's developing it, before he starts selling the lots and he wants to go ahead and fill in the ditches, that can be done in plastic, correct? With no, yes. no clarification on where the driveways are going to be. My question is, are they having to do it to these specs or are they just putting plastic pipe right. in the ground? Uh, to my knowledge, if it's a subdivision, they want to do that ahead of time. That has to be engineered, and we would we would send that to engineering for them to review that. Good. Okay. That ought to help. Thank you. As a subdivision, <laughs> Mr. Stelly, Co coverage on the uh, plastic pipe is going to be an issue. What what kind of cover are we asking for? I think it's uh, is it 12 inches? Yes, I think 12 inches. Minimum 12, 12, inches? Minimum 12 inches. Of of what though? Uh, what what is the finished product on the top? Are we requiring? Grain. <clears throat> It has to be a stone or a granular material or, um, yeah. So it can't just be some kind of field dirt. So we're going to inspect it. It's got to be some type of aggregate of some sort or asphalt or concrete or whatever, right? That's correct. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Farnham. Don't run off, Tim. i got a question <laughs> for you, Tim. <laughs> Up with the details so he can answer this. In, in your opinion, if this plastic is installed per specifications versus concrete pipe that's rolled off in a muddy ditch at the right elevation, is there anything uh, greater about the concrete quality, the quality insulation? Is there one going to be of higher quality than the, than the other if installed per specifications? Well, think that you've got more room for error with concrete because um, you don't know what type of loads you got concrete trucks 12 inches of minimum cover um, if uh, 
you're going to have concrete heavy duty trucks crossing that you may need more than 12 inches of cover yeah, we, and we've we've already covered the uh, temporary covered installation while construction is going on so after it gets done and you're going to have an automobile crossing over this driveway is there anything more special about concrete versus the plastic on a normal driveway it should both it should serve the purpose of either one of those the, the cost of the installation that was figured up was figured on a contractor coming in and installing both of these the whole intent of allowing them to install the plastic is because there's a lot of folks out there that can install their own driveways per the specifications. There's a lot of intelligent people out there. I don't think we give them enough credit in most cases. There's people out there plenty intelligent enough to install this culvert per the specifications and have a quality installation and be cheaper if they did it themselves and if they had to pay a contractor to come out and install a concrete culvert for them. That's my opinion. Thank you, Mr. Farnham. Mr. McMillan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My, my opinion does differ from Mr. Landry's, which that may help Mr. Landry's cause at times, I find. It ought to be a slam dunk now for me, shouldn't <laughs> it? Thank you. I appreciate it. I can tell you that the state lets them do plastic pipe, and not always should we follow what the state does, but the people have the choice on a state highway if they want to put in plastic pipe or if they want to put in concrete pipe. And we had good debate the other day when we were in this committee, it was a 3-2 vote, which I voted for the plastic pipe to be an option at that point in time to let the folks have the option. Basically, it's gonna cost about the same. The only place that the people will maybe save money will be they will be able to do the labor themselves. But the guidelines and restrictions and, and, and what we put on them as requirements, it's gonna be very close in the same thing. But giving the folks a choice to do one or the other, maybe they do have that connection of a neighbor that has plastic pipe, and they can save a little money. I just think it's with good reasoning that I would say, hey, let's go with this, let's give them a choice, and uh, let's, let's give this opportunity for the folks to do either one. But with standards and recommendations like the staff is gonna have. Now, one of the key components that I also based my information on in that meeting was staff's recommendation. And I talked with Wendell, who does most of the pipe installation. He didn't really have a problem in the choice. I talked with Jimmy, who was in the meeting, and, and uh, Wes and Tim and everybody else. Didn't really, didn't really have any heartburn with this issue. So maybe this is something that we really see if there's gonna be much heartburn with this issue out in the public. I think it's a good option to go with the uh, amendment that Mr. Farnham is, is uh, recommending. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. McMillan. Mr. Spell. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Alan, I'm going to put you on the spot here a little bit. Um, Alan, what is your opinion on how this will affect public works maintenance? It should not change our maintenance so long as we can live with the standard that it is the homeowner's responsibility to take care of that driveway. I think the key ingredient in the state's approach to that is that we don't think we broke it every time it comes up broken, and we need to maintain that. We cannot uh, go back and repair faulty installations, which are public works crews. That's the key ingredient for us. If we can hold that line, it does not change our operations hardly at all. So when people call and say the parish owns the ditch, so your responsibility to fix it, we're going to respond. Um, sorry, you're responsible for repairing any failures or maintenance of that plastic pipe. Would that we, be correct? Well, we've always been real responsible, and if we did break it, we will fix it. But beyond that, we don't break that many. And, and it, you know, time to time, incidents have happened. By and large, when these things are going to fail, it's going to be because of the installation gave way. Some, something happened out there. And we usually get that call, and we're going to need to decline that request. Okay. Thank you, Alan. Uh, my, my question still, I mean, as far as um, Mr. Smith's recommendation of removing improper installation, and basically it would be any failures. I mean, I would, I would pose a question if that is an acceptable amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Spell. Mr. Landry. My turn again. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> But we are going back and fixing them. It's happening all the time. 
all over the parish. Brame, didn't you have one in your district just a few weeks ago? Had a lot of failures in some neighborhood. And b because it wasn't done right the first time, how 30 years ago or what have you, the, the taxpayers of this parish had to pay for that. And it's going to happen again. I'm telling you, it may be 10 years from now, but it's going to happen again. When you lessen the standard, it's going to happen again. And then all everybody's going to have to pay. So we are going back, and we're going to continue to go back, because what's going to happen, somebody, some poor little old lady's going to call and going to burn up one of our phones, and then we're going to make a call, hey, well, we got to get out there and fix this. And by the time, you know, 10 years have gone by, we're not going to know who to blame it on, and we just get out there and fix it, because it's blocking the drainage or what have you. Another issue that was brought up a minute ago, well, they're going to build the house, and then after that, it's done. Well, you know, they might sell that house and somebody else might do an addition or something to it and here comes another concrete truck and it's going to bust the pipe in the ditch. Just because the house is finished doesn't mean anything ever heavy is going to go over that driveway again. It's going to happen, believe me. Uh, and the other state allows it. The state doesn't ever come back and maintain the ditch. They're done. It, it doesn't matter to them one way or another. And like I said in the meeting, the heck, they broke anyway. I mean, you know, I don't think we ought to do everything the state does. And if that doesn't convince you, the last thing I got to say is, if you're going to vote for it, just remember Hal's going to vote for it. So you got to question yourself, am I right? Am I really right? I know every time I vote with Hal, I always have to question myself two or three times. I'm thinking, I've got to be wrong if I'm agreeing with Hal. And you usually are. I, I am. I am. That's why I always I'll, it make me want to change my vote right there at the end. You usually are wrong. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Landry. Ms. Griffin. Mr. Landry, you're making me doubt my vote because it looks like I'm going to be voting with him. <laughs> but uh, my question is in, in reference to now if there is an error in the installation of these plastic uh, pipes, then you have specifications on how our citizens are, are supposed to install it. Is that correct? That, they that just don't correct. go out there blindsided. That is correct. They will be given a copy of the uh, specifications uh, for the installation of that okay. at the time of the permit. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I call for question. We have two other speakers. Uh, Mr. Stelling. Um, how much call have you actually, I mean, y'all log all the work you do. How much actual problem have you had with plastic culvert? I mean, there ought to be some numbers we can get. I don't have any numbers, but Stella, uh, we went to concrete pipe several years back because of the calls, and that by and large cut the majority of them out uh, because so, the, that's where the calls were coming from. I have not checked lately. Um, our calls generally relate to the pipe that's gotten really old. It's really beyond, uh, it's kind of like Mr. Landry said, it's 20, 30 years old. It was set under a whole different set of rules or virtually no rules. And we, we spent a lot of time fixing that. <coughs> newer installations, newer permits, been a lot better. That was the intent when we put that program in place, was to get a lot better quality and start over time cutting down on that amount of maintenance. Uh, so it did reduce your callback? Yes, sir, but at the time you got to remember we were installing the pipe, so we had no one else to blame at that point. Yeah, that's true, too. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Stelly. Mr. Crane? Uh, I, just, I just wanted to uh, point out this came, um, we also talked about this in, our, in the liaison group meeting, too, about the, the lengths of the pipe, and Alan and uh, Tim can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think uh, the plastic pipe, doesn't it come in 20-foot lengths? Um, and we really require a 24-foot uh, driveway, and so that would be short of the 24-foot, so therefore you would have to buy another stick of plastic in order to get the extra footage, and then you would have two joints that you'd have to tie into that particular 20-foot plastic pipe, which is a, that's a weak point. Or you make them buy a 30-foot piece and then cut it or whatever. They can use the 30-foot piece. But uh, just, just uh, that came up in our meeting, too. I just wanted to point that out. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you. Uh, Mr. Scott. On the, I agree with one thing right off the top. I agree with people having a choice, blue or red, you know. But with this amendment, you know, the things that stick out to me is proper insulation with standards, homeowner responsible. I mean, that's pretty cut and dry for me. The other thing, I would just like to see pipe failures shall be replaced. I think due to improper installations could just be removed because that's a, just doesn't matter. So I can support this just for the fact of, hey, if they want to do it, one of A or B, I'm going to be all right with that. I'm going to put concrete under my driveways. I always have. I think people should put the concrete under their driveway. But if they want to do it with plastic under the right standards, then I'll be for that. Thank you. Last one, Mr. Farnham. Yeah, I, uh, I guess uh, the, some of the things we talked about in that meeting were uh, the damage to concrete pipe. You know, when we go out there, and it's very hard to repair a piece of concrete pipe that exists, but it's very easy to dam uh, repair a damaged piece of plastic pipe. The, uh, the other thing that lessens the cost of this is if they're going to come in and do their whole front of their yard, they know where the driveway is, they can build the driveway to specifications, the, the culverts to specifications, they don't have to buy the concrete to plastic adapters to get them to the plastic, which we already allow for the entire length of their property. So the overall cost, if they're going to culvert the entire front of their property, is going to be less than if it was if they were going to come in there and put concrete, put adapters, and then go down to plastic. So uh, I just really think this is, is something that we, we need to allow for the citizens of this parish to make that choice. It's still their choice. If they want to put concrete, more power to them. They can put concrete all day long, but they will have the option to put the plastic per our specifications to help their pocketbook out. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Farnham. Uh, Scott. Wes, just for the public's information, what is the penalty for not doing it with the correct standards, either concrete or plastic? Uh, the penalty could be we could impose a civil penalty of up to uh, $500 per occurrence. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. I need to clarify something. Wes started off with this was just to advise us. Are we actually voting on anything to be put on the agenda tonight? Yeah, no. We need to vote. <laughs> yes. Is that what we're doing? Right now it's just to discuss. Votes. Okay. Just discuss. Yeah, you're just putting it on the agenda for tonight. We're putting, we're putting it on the agenda. It'll come up on April the uh, 8th. 8th. Yeah. Yeah. We can go ahead. I, it was, we need a recommendation. We need a recommendation. All we had a motion for was a motion to discuss. I would, I would move to add this to the ordinance for the uh, vote for the next meeting. What? Add this, add this amendment to the ordinance. Mark. Well, the motion was, the original motion was to discuss the item, which if you voted on that motion and it passed, no need to you, you just discuss the item. There's no, there's no moving forward with that. To actually come up with a recommendation to vote on next week, you'd have to have some kind of affirmative motion that said you're going to do something. And if you're going to put another motion on the floor, I'm, I'd like to speak on it. Okay. I'd speak on that one except the question was called, so I don't yeah, think you can recognize it. I, I made a motion to add this amendment to the code of ordinance that we're going to vote on next, next at our next meeting. Okay, we have a motion second. and a second. Any discussion? On recommendation tonight. Any discussion on the motion that we have on the floor? Mr. McMurray. I, I'm going to apologize in advance for speaking on this. I'm not going to be here when y'all vote on it originally, so I've sat here thinking, am I speaking on this as a parish administrator or am I a citizen yet? <laughs> I don't know. But I just, I, I just wanted to point something out, maybe just to throw out for, for thought process anyway. Years ago, when the police jury decided to put in effect a, an electrical code, one of the basic drivers for that move was that individual citizens who were doing their own thing were putting aluminum wiring in houses, which is taboo, very dangerous. 
And the discussion at the time was, well, if somebody's going to do their own wiring in the house, why should the government tell them they can't do that? Well, part of the reason for that was because when they sell that house, there may be a family of five moving in that house that are going to burn up in a fire because they use bad wiring. When we say it's okay to put plastic pipe in there because people can do that themselves, I worry about the quality of that installation. And it doesn't just affect the people living at that location. You know as well as I do, if a piece of pipe goes in the ditch at the wrong grade, it's going to affect somebody. It's going to affect the neighbors on one side or the other, isn't it? So I. I think we, you really need to think long and hard about this notion of, of choice. Um, people could have had a choice to put aluminum wiring in the house, but it, it, wasn't, it wasn't what they should be doing. Uh, this certainly is not life or death situation here like bad wiring would be, but how many times does someone build a home and then come back later to pour a slab at the back and they've got to put a you got to drive a concrete truck across that to get to the back of the house to pour the concrete. Um, I think y'all think long and hard about the about the plastic pipe situation when you hear your engineer and someone else in the construction business says, well, "Yeah, you can put plastic pipe, but I'm putting concrete." That's that's a pretty good commentary uh, from where I sit. So anyway, that, that's my point. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McMurray. Mr. Farnham. That's a good analogy about the aluminum wire, but it was allowed by code at one time to put aluminum wire in the house, and the code changed where you couldn't put anything but copper. Um, we could take the same, same stance on a house. A house would be much stronger if you built it out of cinder block, but cost doesn't allow that. So we want, we want to give people options to build something out of wood if they want. So it's the same situation with this. It's uh, you could always build things to the to the highest standard, but can everybody in the in the parish afford it? I don't know yet. It's uh, it's not the case. We have people that have uh, that might put a house straight on a piece of property, and we we're, we're going to make them spend as much money on a culvert to access their property as what their trailer costs. There's just a lot of people out there that have the means and the capability to do things for themselves, and if we allow the plastic put in in the right circumstances and by spec it's just as strong as, as concrete is. They may have just an automobile going over the thing. They don't necessarily going to have concrete trucks, may never have a concrete truck. We have inspectors that go out and inspect this, this, uh, these installations before we allow them to occupy their house. We have uh, enough tools in place to enforce this, I believe, uh, rather than just put the highest standards out there and, and call it good. Um, I just think we owe it to the people to do this. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Farnham. Mr. Andropon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'd like to address, uh, let's discuss the uh, inspection and the grades and that sort of thing for just a second. I'm sorry I got here late, but uh, circumstances. What I want to know is presently as we speak, we are responsible from A to Z, is that correct? I mean, we, we make sure that the grade is shot. That's correct. We make sure that the, the correct pipe is put in the ground or laid in the ditch. Yes, that's We inspect correct. it after, before he covers it up, am I correct? That's correct. All right. I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit confused and I'm not trying to ride a fence here. What I'm trying to do is put everything into perspective. Who is, number one, who is gonna shoot the grade before the pipe is laid in the ditch? Our, our, uh, our inspector does that. He goes out and actually shoots the grade to see what the, uh, the invert of that pipe needs to be. Okay. He provides a plan he as provides well. Provides a plan, yeah. That, that, I mean, they have a drawing That's to given work to for them that, that we prepare for them that, that helps guide them toward this installation. Now, that being said, let's say a guy here lays the pipe in the ground and it's not quite what the specification is supposed to be. At that time, is he told he's got to change yes. the format, go to and, and redo it like it's supposed to be yes. before he covers it up? Am I correct? That's correct. He either fails the inspection and has to pay a reinspection fee, you know, to go out there and look at that. All right, third and final, we're talking about concrete pipe, 
versus plastic pipe. Am I right? That's correct. I guess the part I missed and I want to know is what is the consensus of staff regarding plastic pipe opposed to concrete? Uh, Do you care? Uh, as long as this, as long as it's installed in accordance with the specifications, uh, I think we expressed that that was fine with us. Uh, you know, what is the preference? You know, the preference, I guess, is concrete because we don't have any problems with that. Well, there were two things that were said, one by Les and one by Mark, and both of them make a lot of sense. And I can't disagree with what you said, but I also can't disagree with what you said, you know. Um, can I go get a drink of water? And <laughs> <laughs> um, something a little stronger. <laughs> well, we're actually not going to vote on this until next Thursday night. Am I correct? We can't take it. April, April 8th. Tonight. Okay. Yeah, no. All right. Well, that, that gave me some more time to. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Mr. Spell. Is this motion including the revision of that language from? Uh, improper installation to any failures? Yes. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, any further discussion? Mr. Landry. I just got one last thing to say because they keep bringing it up. Is it cheaper? It, it, you already have said that it is not cheaper. Putting the plastic pipe to that spec that we're going to require is not cheaper than putting the concrete. It's the same price. Isn't that what your research found? I think based on the information that uh, when Lorimer, our inspector, when he, when he did the comparisons and everything, there was not much difference in cost uh, regarding that. Now, I think Mr. Farnham is correct. If, they, if somebody did it, did it themselves and you take out the labor, then obviously they're saving some money. Right. I don't know how much. but The, the, the next and last thing I'm going to say, and, and I don't know if it's Tim or yourself just going to answer it. Plastic is not stronger than concrete. That's an engineering. So it is not stronger. <laughs> Which one's stronger? Is that physics? They're basically the same price. We, the concrete would be stronger on its own. Thank you. That's all I want to say. And if I could clarify just a, a point while we were talking about a while ago. Renoir Estates, if I'm correct me if I'm wrong, is a private development that's off of uh, Beglis, uh, that's the one we're talking about off of Beglis Parkway? Yes. That's a private, it was pre-planned, they knew where the driveways were going to go on a subdivision where we allow plastic pipe, the developer has no means of knowing where the driveway is going to go, so that's the reason that the plastic pipe was allowed to go all the way through because there was no, uh, so if we allow plastic pipe anyway on the frontage, there's no way for them to know where the driveway was going to go. You know, I mean, so... Thank you, Mr. Chairman. To, to wrap this finale up, I just want to say thank you all. Thank you all for the, for the spirited debate amongst the jury because it is important that we have that back and forth with each other. I, I disagree with some of the folks, and that's okay. And, and we, we have that freedom to say that up here. But we also are going to have to vote yes or no on this thing, so we will make a decision on this. And I'm hoping tonight, we, as we vote, we make a recommendation for the choice. That's what I would like to see done, but I'm only one vote. And I can tell you uh, that I feel confident in our staff that feels that hey, it may not be a lot cheaper, but there are people out there that may can save some money on plastic pipe getting it installed. And I know what Wendell does. He'll be out there inspecting left and right, and the parish will not suffer on this. We're not going to solve every drainage problem, every piece of pipe problem. But I can tell you, uh, everybody's had some good opinions tonight, and it's really made you think about this issue, issue long and hard. And then our votes will be what tells which way you feel about it and how you feel like you're representing your constituents. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. McMillan. I thought you were going to repeat what Randy said earlier. Wisdom is born of disagreement. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Stelly. As always, I'm inspired by Mr. Uh, McMillan's <laughs> statements. But, uh, <laughs> what's going to happen is that they're going to purchase plastic culverts and they're going to put them in themselves, and we will never see a permit, and we will never see an inspection. Because you can pick them up, two men can pick them up, you know, put them in a ditch, 
They're going to either bore a backhoe or they're going to shovel it to some sort of grade, which is not going to be the correct grade. It's not going to be covered properly, and it's never going to be inspected, and I think that's what's going to end up happening with plastic cover. Yeah. Well, let me say this, is that if somebody does that, then it's illegal. But, but and, it's and, be done. and if it does and, and it's found out, yeah. then obviously we have the right to... Well, they're taking a design. chance. Yeah, they're they are. Legal you know, they're they're going to spend... The if, yeah. they, if they did save any money, they're going to now spend the money on the fine. That's but correct. I guarantee you, you're not going to see many plastic cover permits. That's just my guess. But anyway. Thank you, Mr. Stelly. Any further discussion? Roll call, Madam Secretary. Roll call for what? The motion on the floor is that the Public Works Committee recommendation be to adopt to the full jury for action on April 8th um, to adopt the ordinance establishing general provisions and conditions for culvert installations and fees related thereto, along with the amendment allowing plastic pipe culvert with the removal, I'm sorry, with the amendment of that last, second to the last sentence uh, reading, plastic pipe failures due to any failure shall be replaced immediately by and at the expense of the property owner. Question before we vote. Yes. <coughs> are we voting to put this on the agenda for the 8th? Is that what we're voting on? Or are we going to vote to whip the meat off this horse again next next week? To put it on the agenda for the 8th. That's correct. The next regular. I don't mind doing that, but well, you're voting to as a committee to recommend what Kathy just read to recommend uh, uh, the amended language here allowing the plastic pipe. Now that that doesn't make it final. You'll have to vote on again. Well, and to adopt the ordinance as well, but but with that amendment. But you're not. Well, no, you're not voting to adopt the ordinance. You're voting to recommend to adopt the ordinance because this is a committee and you can't adopt the ordinance. But but you're you're putting. This is going to be on the agenda next week anyway because it's been on committee. But what you're doing is voting to. This motion is to recommend that the ordinance be adopted with this amendment allowing plastic pipe. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, if I may suggest that that be separated and that the, the, the amendment be handled separately. Mr. Farnham made the motion. I don't see where if, if we were against it next week, if that you couldn't extract it. I agree. At that time. We'll see where it needs to be separate. If, if it fails tonight, we can bring the someone can bring the um, the ordinance back up. Correct. Don't you need us to take action on that for next week's meeting? Uh, we we would like for the jury to be able to adopt the original part of that. You know, if if you do not want the requirement the amendment then that's up to y'all but we would like to go forward with adopting the proposed ordinance as it as it was originally written mr. McMurray from a parliamentary perspective the probably the cleanest way to have done this and you, you're going a different way which is okay but the cleanest way to have done this would have been to have a motion to approve the ordinance as presented and then have an amendment offered to that to put in place what's in the yellow, you would vote on the amendment first. If it passes, then you would vote on the ordinance as amended. If the amendment doesn't pass, then you still have the motion to approve the ordinance as originally done. Now, you, that's, go ahead, Mr. Farnham. I believe that's what my motion was in the beginning, was to add, I made a recommendation to add this amendment to the ordinance, and that's all my motion was for. Well, the problem, though, Les, is that there wasn't a motion in place to adopt the ordinance to, in the first place. You, you, you would make a motion to amend something that's already, a, 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 that's already on the floor as a motion. So it's, it's, it's kind of just the logistics here. But, um, okay, well, I'll, I'll withdraw my motion. I'll make a motion to adopt the ordinance. Second. We have a motion and a second. <coughs> Any discussion? Spell. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. On a separate issue, on the logging part of it, I do have a concern about that section. I've had instances where people go and put an 18-inch pipe in a drainage lateral. <laughs> what addresses that problem? Are uh, there penalties? The, oh, yeah. There, there could be penalties, sure. Okay. 
Okay. Mainly because I, I want to make sure that if somebody goes to put in a temporary <laughs> culvert yeah. in in if, a if you see under uh, under C standards. We indicate uh, temporary coat must be constructed of minimum 16 gauge metal. The size of the pipe must be equal or greater to, than the size required for permanent culverts. So we've kind of covered that. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Spell. Uh, any further discussion? Any objection? Hearing none, motion carries. Now, Farnham. I would make a motion that we add the amendment discussed previously to the ordinance. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any with with the uh, part that Mr. Spell had added. <laughs> Madam Secretary, could you read? Do you have it sectioned off where you could read that back? Just the just the amendment portion. Yes, sir. Um, the second to the last sentence on this yellow highlighted sheet, the amendment yeah. was amended to read: plastic pipe <gasps> failures due to. Well, I'm sorry. Any. Failures would be pipe failures shall, shall, be, be, shall be replaced immediately. Yeah. Yeah. Strike out due to improper installation. Right. Do we have any further discussion? <clears throat> At this time, we'll have roll call. Mm -hmm. I, I need a clarification. Go right ahead and ask the question. We do know that there's a roll call vote. Um, I mean, I'm, I guess I'm getting lost here, but I'm sure. can I have a clarification? Please? What we're voting on right now is this amendment to yeah, allow yeah. the plastic pipe with the removal of those yeah, four words yeah. due to improper installations. Is it still not clear, Mr. Blair? Okay. Mr. Andropont? No. Mr. Brain? No. Mr. Collins? No. Mr. Farnham? Yes. Mrs. Griffin? Yes. Mr. Gidry? Yes. Mr. Landry? No. Dr. Mackey? Yes. Mr. McMillan? Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. Mr. Spell? Yes. Mr. Stelly? No. Mr. Sias? Yes. Eight six motion carries, Madam Speaker. Yes, Spire. sir. Eight to five. <clears throat> okay. Eight to five. Yeah, it'll just be in court. We now move on to item four. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Frank. Consideration of making a recommendation with reference to requesting legal counsel to review parish ordinances pertaining to house-to-house -house peddling and draft amendments thereto prohibiting such activity by persons or businesses not related to recognized charitable, civic, or service organizations and further requesting that a presentation of such draft amendment be made at the April 29th, 2010 committee meetings of the police jury. Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, any discussion? Mr. S Mr. S uh, Spell. Same question I think we brought up before. I just want to make sure we're not uh, picking on the high school kids uh, selling the chocolate bar. So we're going to be addressing that in the, in the draft and language. <coughs> That's correct. I understand that, Mr. Spell. Okay. Any further? Mr. S uh, it was Mr. Scott first. Didn't we cover this a few months ago? <laughs> I mean, what's the difference? I just want to know where we're at or what's going on now. And before you answer that question, Mr. Smith, Less than a week ago, I had the cleaners going through the neighborhood with the spray bottle and the rags, and I called the sheriff department and told them to at least come check it out. I don't know where it went from there, but it just looked a little iffy to me. I mean, so I did make the phone call, and I thought we had an ordinance that the sheriff would have went and checked on them. So I can't tell you if they did or didn't, so that would be our next issue is when we make the phone call, is it being followed up on? Okay, Mr. Chairman. If, if I could, before Mr. Smith starts, I, I'm the one that requ uh, requested this be put on for discussion tonight. I've had um, several dozen calls from my area, um, mostly connected with some recent break-ins. And what has happened is, um, not necessarily the ones that came to your house, uh, but they're using door-to-door -door sales as a front to case 
neighborhoods, case houses. Uh, we've had situations where they were looking in the, the windows uh, of people that weren't home. Um, this is a nuisance. It's a front for illegal activity. And from my discussions with most, most people, no one sees where there's a need for this door-to-door door door sales. Uh, people are able to put uh, the ordinance, yeah. things on a do not, you know, their phone on a do not call list. They'd like the same option with their house. Uh, I've talked with the sheriff's department. This gives them a little bit more to go on because, you know, if they do track the people down, if they have, if they can flash a permit or something, they're not, uh, not able to do anything because they have a legal means to be on the property, on someone else's property. Mr. Smith. What you all did, Mr. Scott, uh, earlier was to make uh, amendments to our section 15-22, and it, it described peddlers in some detail. Uh, and the main thing that it did was to uh, have requirements for door-to-door -door peddling. It says here, this is our ordinance 15-22, uh, and it says all door-to-door -door peddlers shall complete an application and obtain a license from the Occupational License Department of the Division of Planning and Development and shall provide information including, but not limited to, the following as part of the application process. Individual's full legal name, social security number, date of birth, copy of driver's license, copy of vehicle registration, signature of applicant attesting, knowledge of and agreeing to a criminal background check. Upon completion of the criminal background check, and if it is determined that the applicant's character and business responsibility are satisfactory, approval shall be noted on the application, and upon payment of a $100 license fee, the required license and identification badge is to be produced by the parish and delivered to the applicant along with a copy of any administrative regulations developed by the license officer or designee. That's, so that's our current peddling. It would include door-to-door -door and all these kinds of uh, things. You all also did a solicitation ordinance, if you recall. We had people coming from Houston in a Cadillac would put on raggedy clothes and stand up here and, and beg uh, two or three thousand dollars a day at these intersections. Well, we put a stop to that as well. So those are the two things that you all did uh, within the last two years. Uh, but there is no prohibition, uh, Mr. Hassan, uh, for a door-to-door, -door, but they have to comply with these uh, obligations and requirements in a criminal background check. One other point to make is it is prohibited in Iowa, Vinton, Lake Charles, and Sulphur, don't, uh, and Westlake. The only municipality in the parish that, that does not have door-to-door uh, -door sales prohibited is De Quincey right now. Do we have any further discussion? So uh, next week, are we going to have somebody from the sheriff's department here so we can ask how they are, you know, when we're making these calls, or they, you know, it's not necessary, I guess, if it's going to be up on the agenda. But as far as following up on these calls to see if they're licensed? I certainly will be glad to check with the sheriff's department. I'm not quite sure why they don't already have plenty of jurisdiction to take care of somebody trespassing on somebody's property and look it in the windows. Um, now, whether these people have come forward and gotten a license from us with a criminal background check that's smooth and all of that, I don't know. Uh, but if Mr. Hassan would know if these people actually had been licensed, and I, and I don't know that. So maybe next week we can get Deputy James McGee up here to kind of answer some questions for us just to make sure we're all on the same picture. I'll be happy to contact him. I'll be happy to w do whatever you all want me to do. I'm going to do some research and find out what the other ordinances provide and provide you all with a report. And then I'll be glad to have uh, uh, Deputy McGee here when I do that on the next meeting on the Scheduled 29th. Scheduled for the 29th to give uh, Mr. Smith time to gather this information and draft an ordinance that we can review and, and vote on. All right, no problem. Mr. Uh, Sias. Uh, I, I had the same question. I thought we had already done this already before, so. Okay. Mr. Landry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, we have. And we wasted more ink. I don't care what you do. The <laughs> crook's still going to do it. I, didn't, I don't care what you pass. If the guy wants to go and break in your house, and that's the kind of fella he is, he doesn't care what ordinance you pass. He's still going to break in your house. And if you decide, if he's smart enough and it's okay to, to sell, uh, you can take your kid down the road there and knock on doors and sell candy for school as a fundraiser, well, guess what? 
a crook's going to do anything. He'll get a kid to come with him and, and make it look like that's what he's doing. He's still going to break in your house. So it doesn't really, I mean, you passing that isn't going to matter. Neighbors need to stick together. You see something that's not right in the neighborhood that you think ain't right, you call the sheriff's department, they'll come out there and check it out. We, we don't need to pass that. Thank you, Mr. Landry. I'm glad you brought that up because someone who called the sheriff's department is here to speak, Miss Amy Trowell. Please come to the mic and uh, state your name and address. My name is Amy Trout, and I live at 4511 Brooklyn in Carlos. Uh, and um, I understand what you're saying, you know, but what we're doing is we're making it okay. They go get a permit to come to our door in the middle of the day when most people are at work and and they want to sell you window cleaner it's not mo there's it's in a spray bottle <clears throat> with um no label on it or anything and the problem that i'm having is the more that i more people i talk to the stories are starting to all link together and my experience the other day uh last thursday I was coming home from grocery shopping. I'm a stay-at-home mom, so I'm home all day, and I'm the nosy neighbor. I know who goes up and down the street, and I'm always looking out, and my neighbors appreciate it. Um, I see two men on the road. Well, we were supposed to be looking out for these two men that were linked to a robbery out in Carlos. So I saw the two men. They matched the description. I called the sheriff's department. Um, I waited, you know, their records show that they showed up in about 12 minutes, but they showed up to Walker Road in 12 minutes. Then he couldn't find my street, which is, I mean, I was very close to where he was. But anyway, the, the Sheriff's Department is working on that. But, um, you know, he started to walk towards me, and I'm in my vehicle. I didn't even open my garage to go put my groceries up or anything. And the guy is walking towards me, and... I'm on the phone with the sheriff's department. Well, long story short, the guy scared me to death because we got the call saying, look out for these guys. We never got the call that they have been captured. So the whole time when this guy walks up to my vehicle, had no front teeth, scared me to death. Um, I sent, you know, the, the sheriff's department comes. He questions them. They have a permit. Uh, they had backpacks, no uniform. They both had a backpack on. You know, I watched them go to my neighbors that were not home um, and look in the door. And I'm, I'm assuming they knocked, but they were looking in the house. Another little girl down the road, she's about 20, was home, and she watched the guy looking in her door after no one answered for three or four minutes. So they're, they're not there to sell us anything. That's just their ticket to the front door. And... I, I don't think now we have internet. I mean, they could go stick it in someone's store. They don't need to come door to door nowadays. Um, so, I mean, I know that it's a stretch, but I'm really hoping that we can get this changed. I, um, I know that we have the cookie sales and the, you know, I mean, I have a son that plays football and he wants to go to the neighbors. And to me, that's totally different. I mean, the kids versus someone from out of state that comes to get a permit to come to our neighborhoods in the middle of the day, not in the evenings when people are home. Uh, I think there's a problem. You know, so I understand what you're saying about it, but you know, I am a stay-at-home mom, and when I answer the door, this guy has a permit. You know, the Sheriff's Department said he has a permit. Well, I didn't want to get close enough to see the permit hanging on his shirt, but when I answer the door, it's me and the door. That's it. There's nothing. He's got a permit to walk right up. And if he wants in, I don't have to open the door. He's, I mean, if he wants in, he's going to get in. Um, so, I mean, you know, we're going to have a sheriff's department come out at, to Carlos and do a community watch, which will then break down into uh, a neighborhood watch. And so all of Carlos will be able to set up their neighborhood watch programs. Um, and that's going to be tomorrow night, Friday night at Vincent Settlement School in the gym if anybody wants to join us. The Sheriff's Department will do it. And, um, you know, I mean, we're going to do our part as citizens looking out for one another, but um, we just don't want them to have the free pass to walk up to our door. Um, so that's all I'm asking. One more thing, there was, uh, um, 
the other day there was a lady, a meat salesman came to her door. She said, I don't want the meat, sir. You know, I don't want to go. Please go away. And he beat her up. And, you know, I sit at home all summer with my kids, and we're not inside. We're outside the garage. You know, the kind of the code is that if the garage is up, the kids can all come over and play. And so I don't want to be trapped in my house in fear of one of them walking up because, you know, they've walked up to people in their driveway or in the backyard or whatever. So that's all I'm asking <laughs> is just that if, if we could just consider that. Thank you, Ms. Trial. Uh, does anyone have any questions? I think this of, is of for Ms. Trial. I think this one's for Mr. Smith. Okay. Um, right now, if, if, if somebody comes up here and gets a permit, it's okay for them to do this. And if, if they have complaints and the Sheriff's Department comes, is there anything that they can do to those folks versus a guy that just decides on his own that he wants to go door to door selling uh, whatever he wants to try to sell them? Uh, what's the difference there? Well, if you have an ordinance that says no door to door sales of any kind like they have in the city of Lake Charles, mm -hmm. if somebody comes to my house to sell shrimp like they do on a regular basis, uh, I can report them, and if the police get out there in time, I guess they can arrest them and impose whatever penalty the city imposes in its ordinance. On the other hand, we do allow peddlers to go door to door, but we hope that we have screened them by the ordinance that you all pass so that you would assume that, that the people who are engaging in this kind of thing will have some sort of a rap sheet or a criminal record and a background check would reveal that, and that was the purpose of why we did it our way. I would like to see the permits these guys were carrying myself because I doubt very, very seriously that they were legitimate. But that's not the point. The point is that if you ban door-to-door uh, -door sales entirely, then anybody who does it is in violation, and the sheriff or the you know whoever the law enforcement uh, is should uh, be able to take care of that. I guess one of the problems I've got with with people that are going door-to-door -door is that they don't pay tax like the regular business people of the parish. They're held to a different standard. They have to they have to pay their taxes. A positive part of society. That's how we all get our money to operate this parish is by sales tax. And these uh, door to door guys uh, circumvent that, and it costs everybody money. Well, except that under our ordinance, they do have to pay a fee, which is in replacement of a license tax. It's the license fee we charge them. It's a permitting fee, yes. which takes the place of the tax that they would right. do. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fauna. Mr. Vickers? Mr. Chairman, I, I just want to bring this to your attention. We have already refused people uh, that have applied for permits due to their criminal background check. So the people that are coming in, um, you know, we're doing strict appearance um, to this ordinance uh, to make sure that, you know, it's safe for the community and safe for these people and having the proper identification. Um, there, I, I would rather suspect that where these break-ins are coming are, are people that haven't been into this office or either were subsequently denied and then went out in these neighborhoods, um, which is really unfortunate. Uh, but I do agree with Mr. Landry too. Is is that uh, you know the best thing you could ha possibly have is if you don't want somebody in your yard, you put a no trespassing sign. Then if they trespass, they can be arrested. Mr. Farnham. I guess uh, I think every piece of property in Calcutt Parish is posted. There's no trespassing anywhere in the parish, the way I understand it. And if, if one of these guys that doesn't have a permit is, is picked up by the Sheriff's Department, is there anything that they can do to them right now? That's what I'm going to say. Follow state law whatever the penalty is for trespassing. I mean, they, they would have to arrest them, uh, cite them. They'll have to go to court, They'll give it to the district attorney's office. The district attorney will haul them over to court and do that. It would follow a whole different set of regulations. If we put an ordinance in place that says that they can't go door to door, period, that would be more teeth to pick these guys up. I'm sorry. Well, I. One of the things I'm going to have to do is study what the penalties are on the various ordinances and try to blend something that makes sense. 
and fits in with these other things. And what I'm going to do is, uh, what you all are asking me to do is to draft an ordinance and bring come back, and then you all will vote on it at that time. I would presume if the ordinance is to do away with door-to-door -door peddling at all, then you what you'll have to do is rescind this portion that you did. Uh, maybe it's last year. I can't remember. Oh, I think so. 2008. Oh, Anyway, you would have to rescind uh, the definition of peddler to an extent and, and what door-to-door uh, -door peddlers can do and just do away with it, and then you'd have to decide what kind of penalty you wanted for it. But, that, but that's what I'm going to look into in research and come back to you with. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Brian, for that on the 29th, can you make a request that someone from the sheriff's office, I made that request. Matter of fact, the, the, the gentleman that's over the... Uh, substation in Salford, uh, that was his language. It's a front for illegal activity, and I think we need to hear that from the sheriff's department because they're asking, at least he was, he was asking that we we put this in place to give them, the, you know, better way to police it. Mr. McMillan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to see you study a moratorium, moratorium on no door-to-door -door sales in Calcasieu Parish. I'm not for it any at all. I wouldn't mind if you even threw in there that the politicians don't come knocking on the doors. That'd be fine with me too. It's going to open with that. Well, that, that would be just okay there too, but it is an infringement. Uh, I, I don't like uh, that infringement of my privacy of folks coming up to my house and selling stuff. I got local uh, businesses that, that are uh, forthright and do taxes right that I can go shop and buy anything that I want here in Calcasieu Parish. And if I don't want to do that, I can get it off the internet. I'm not for door-to-door -door sales of any sort. I'm not really for these guys that set up quickly on the corner either, because we got businesses that sell Saints t-shirts every day of the year. But you see those guys come in and, and take money out of this community and, and, and it doesn't go to the local folks. I would like to see that brought back to us also. I'm, I'll get off that fence. I'm not for door-to-door -door sales and I'd like to see a moratorium in Calcasieu Parish. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. McMillan. Mr. Stelly. I'd just like to make a comment about Mr. McMillan's internet purchases, that he is responsible for the sales tax. <laughs> <laughs> that I found out for sure this week. But anyway, I think, though, while we're discussing this, though, is that, you know, our, our towns and our little cities are not what they used to be. And I think parents should really take precaution about where they send their children to peddle things. Absolutely. It's a parent's responsibility not to send their child in the neighborhood. Go to the people you know, but don't send your children in neighborhoods to peddle candy where you don't know. You're putting your child in danger. So that's just wanted to make that comment. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Stelly. Any further discussion? Ms. <laughs> Ms. Trout, please. Yeah, if I could just say one more thing. If we decide to keep it and not do away with the door-to-door, -door, consider this. They're finding a way around what all the, you know, ramifications that we've set up. They're finding a way around it. And so, I mean, we can leave it and let them come door-to-door, -door and but it's not the one coming to my door so much that I'm worried about. It's he's going to go give the information to someone else. And that's the person I'm worried about. And that's what we're seeing, is they'll go door to door, they'll gather information that when people are home, they've been seen taking mail and, you know, rummaging through backyards. But they go give that information to someone else. So even if we have them give information and get a permit and walk around with a badge, it, they're not the ones I'm worried about. It's their buddy that they're going to go tell what, you know, who has what and who, who's home when. So, you know, if we don't do away with it, I just ask you to consider that, you know, that it's, it's not them we're worried about, it's their buddy, you know, that, it's not, that he's not going to pass, you know, the screening, and he, he won't he'd be turned down for a permit. So that's all I'm asking. Thank you. Any further? Mr. Sias. Um, I, I've been listening to this, and, you know, I, I hear people say, too much government. Man, it sounds like we got it right now. And I'm just afraid that... Uh, Next time you turn around, you're going to hear people say, we, we don't want kids to do Halloween because they're coming to my door and they're peeping. I mean, you know, it's just, you know, it's just scary. I mean, now we just, you know, you know we, where, where, where we go? Where are we going with this? You know, I'm just trying to figure out where we're going with this. Thank you, Mr. Sias. Now, 
just to clarify, we are we are not saying anything about civic organizations, children, you know, children going door to door. We're not trying to prohibit that. Well, that was Mr. McMillan. <laughs> Mr. McMillan just said. Well, let me, let me have a full back. Mr. McMillan. Thank you. And I absolutely agree with what Mr. Stelly said. I mean, the local kids and, and selling the candy and coming through like that. But I agree. The parents should know where these kids are at and where the neighborhoods are and what houses they're going to. I wouldn't send my grandson out to, to somebody I didn't know. And, and we're not against the kids and the civics clubs doing that. But... As far as these these salesmen of uh, with the backpacks and the and and the books and the spray stuff coming up to your house, I'm not for that. We need that's the initial contact that can get it to the next person, or maybe it's that person there. That that uh, we had a robbery the other day in Westlake where they came in and cased and kicked in the door. The lady was home and they caught them. Uh, you know this this stuff is ha happening throughout the parish and. I think that we, we need some, some help with this door-to-door -door stuff. And like the no-call list uh, on the telephone, I would love to have a, hey, uh, don't come to my door, no, no soliciting there, you know, in the parish. So uh, that's some stuff that our attorney can look at and we can debate at a later time. But uh, absolutely, I'm not trying to harm the, the civic clubs and the kids, any at all. I agree with Mr. Stelly on his comments. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Any further discussion? Mr. Landry. I'm going to get y'all to come spend a day with me on Broad Street, and I can tell you, I, I can show you some crackheads and make you think they're the president of the PTA. <laughs> you, you, they'll make you believe it, I'm telling you. So it doesn't matter what you pass, they, they still, they're still going to go to the door. I mean, just the neighbors have to look out for each other, be aware of what's going on. Something doesn't look right, you call the sheriff's department. That's what they're there for. They're going to be more than happy to come out there. I, I, I'm tell, Whatever you do, they're going to think of a way around it. That, those type of people that, that are after something like that. It takes bringing a kid and a box of candy, then that's what they're going to do. Uh, I mean, you're, you're, there's nothing you can pass that they can't figure a way around it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Landry. Um, Madam Secretary, we have a motion and a second on the floor. Yes, sir. To, uh, Any further discussion? Any objection? Hearing none, motion carried. Item number five, consideration of making a recommendation with reference to adopting a resolution approving an increase in the animal Move on five. Second. euthanasia and disposal fees for out-of-parish entities from $10 to $25 and further authorizing the president of the police jury or his designee when appropriate to execute all documents related thereto. Mr. Allen Wainwright. I'll, just, I'll be glad to uh, answer any questions. This, uh, if there are any, we've uh, met with the advisory board. We've also spoke with the uh, two liaisons, Mr. Scott and Mr. Landry. I think they're, my understanding, a little split on the actual dollar amount. Uh, I would just argue that we do need an increase. Uh, we've been systematically going through the animal services department and the fees that they collect and trying to get those things updated. This is just a, a case of that. You may recall we raised the rates on our citizens this year on the licensing fee we've, we've raised our citation rates we've sort of systematically been going through making everything up to date and this is one of the last ones we have attempted to identify the cost to this service and uh, attempted to come up with a number that's reasonable I would tell you that uh, Ms. Teresa Shampo who prepared this for us has looked at it thoroughly it's really hard to get at an actual actual cost she has come up with the things that we feel like we could prove, but to run one animal through that shelter for another parish, I would tell you, cost more than this. But this is a big change in a, overnight, uh, and, and so we, we were not prepared to ask for any more, and surely we would accept uh, some other number, but we do need to raise the rate to, to charge the same amount uh, that we are charging in other areas of the department. So with that, I'll just answer any questions if there are any. Mr. Landry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My only problem was that, number one, it waited too long to happen. This probably should have been done 10 years ago, and you're raising it from 10 to $25. I mean, that's more than double. I just said 20 Hey, I don't care if it's 25 or 30 But from now on, that needs to be reviewed on a yearly basis. You're not talking about a lot of money. And, and that these parishes are paying because I looked at the numbers of animals that they're bringing. So, you know, 
it probably won't affect them that much. And obviously, this is a lot cheaper than running a facility, uh, and them starting their own facility and doing it themselves. But it, we should it should be looked at every year or two and, and not doubling it on them. Because some of these parishes, I mean, they're smaller parishes, and I mean, you know, they have limited funds. And, and I wouldn't think it's going to put them in a bind. But I mean, yeah, we just we shouldn't wait 10 or 15 years before we change the price. Yes, sir. We agree with you. Thank you, Mr. Landry. Mr. Scott. Yeah, me and Mr. Landry did talk uh, quite a few times on this with Ms. Rita and different people, and uh, you know, I, I was in agreement on my end for at least breaking even. You know, I don't f believe our taxpayers should pay for other parishes' services, so that's kind of where the number 25 was. I was kind of leaning towards. The second thing is when you look at all the different parishes individually, it's not a lot of animals. Collectively. I didn't want to pay their their services, so I think it's just yeah maybe hindsight we should and I agree Mr. with Mr. Langer we should keep up with it a little more frequently and review the numbers but I think 25 is a fair number. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Sias. Yes, yeah, so all, uh, all I have to say is that uh, in my my dealings with Ms. Uh, Rita and the animal control I have been very satisfied with the work they're doing and I I applaud the work that they're doing and keep up the good work. I think they're doing a real good job. Thank you. I have not had any problems with the Questions. service. Thank you. Any further discussion? <clears throat> any objection? Hearing none, motion carries. Item 6, consideration of making a recommendation with reference to adopting a resolution to officially clarify the name of a public road located in Second. Ward 8 as Denison Road for purposes of correcting the public street sign and the 911 Master Street Address Guide. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Any objection? Hearing none, motion carries. Item number seven. Move on seven. Consideration of making a recommendation with reference to adopting a resolution to officially clarify the name of a public road located in Ward 6 as Carroll Hickson Road for purposes of correcting the public street sign and 911 Master Street Address Guide. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Any objection? Hearing none, motion carries. Item number eight, consideration of making a recommendation with reference to adopting eight. an second. ordinance recommending second. no through trucks on River Road from Denison Road to Manhide Road in Ward 8. We have a motion by Mr. Spell, a second by Mr. Stel oh, a motion by Mr. Stelly, a second by Mr. Spell. Any discussion? Any objection? Hearing none, motion carries. Item number nine, consideration of make, making a recommendation with reference to adopting a resolution approving an amendment to the contract for engineering services for storm water master planning between the police jury and C.H. Finstermaker and Associates for storm water master, master planning Ward 1 Basin to include engineering services for the Lacassine and Sabine Basins. So moved. We have a motion by Dr. Mackey, second by Mr. Brame. Any discussion? Mr. Spell. What does this cover, Mr. Wainwright? <laughs> well, I'm glad to announce this is the last basins. Uh, there's on opposite ends of the parish, but the last two basins that we need to study. This is uh, the Sabine Basin that drains off into the Sabine and actually the Lexington. So we, uh, this is the last two. We still anticipate having these in and complete uh, by around October of this year and uh, have an opportunity to prepare a, a parish-wide, put all these basins together into one package and uh, ultimately develop a, a drainage program to allow some of the work that these studies have identified to start taking place. Communities that will benefit from this, name a few. In this case, the Starks, Denton, Bell City, Hayes. Those. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Jim. Thank you, Mr. Spell. Yes, Any further discussion? Any objection? Hearing none, motion carries. Item number 10, consideration of making a recommendation with reference to adopting a resolution approving a joint services agreement between the police jury, Department of Engineering and Public Works, and Gravity Drainage District Number 4 of Ward 3 for the purpose of clearing, trimming, and disposal of limbs on Levy Road, Roadway leading to Goodman Road Pump Station. A motion by Dr. Mackey, second by Mr. Sias. Any discussion? Any objection? 
Hearing none, motion carries. Item number 11. Move on 11. Consideration of making Second. a recommendation with reference to adopting a resolution authorizing the president of the police jury to execute the necessary documents for acquisition of right of way from Leonard Thomas Withrow, Withrow on Edgerly De Quincey Road in Ward 4. We have a motion by Mr. Spell, a second by Mr. Scott. Any discussion? Any objection? Hearing none, motion carries. Consideration of making a recommendation with reference to adopting a resolution well, authorizing again. the president of the police jury to execute the necessary documents for servitude of passage from L.A. Bouquet Corporation on Edgerly De Quincey Road in Ward 4. Motion by Mr. Spell, a second by Mr. Scott. Any discussion? Any objection? Mr. Hearing Chair. none, motion carries. The chair recognizes President Guidry for uh, personal privilege. Thank you, Mr. Chair. At this time, we have a couple proclamations that we want to present today. And um, the first one we're going to present is to Ms. Colleen Clark. And basically, Mayor Randy Roach kind of stole my thunder coming in a little bit before me. But um, now, therefore, I, Kevin Guidry, president of the Calcasieu Parish Police Jury, do hereby proclaim on the day 25th day of March 2010 that Thursday, April 22nd, 2010, shall here and after be known and remembered as Miss Colleen L. Clark Day throughout the parish. Colleen, we have a little something here tonight we want to present to you because you've been a mainstay here with us for a number of years, and a lot of times we can't really give a person, I feel, of your stature the honor and the praise that you honestly deserve because coming on eight years ago I was a little bit of a pup didn't know much about government didn't really understand what was being asked of me as an elected official but Colleen you made me feel even more of a person in understanding the needs of people and that's what we do here as a governing body we're here to make sure that the people in which we represent which are our constituents get the best quality of life that we can give them. And that's one of the things that I want to say here to you tonight, Colleen, that that's what you've given me as a person and as an elected official, to give people that I serve the best quality of life. And we just want to present this here to you tonight, Colleen, for all the things that you've done here for us and all the jurors. And we just thank you so very much, Colleen, from the bottom of our heart. Now this next guy, I don't even know if I have enough words here tonight that I can even describe the things that Mark has done for me as a young man. But I just want to say from all of us, Mark, we have a proclamation also that we want to present here to you tonight. But from just getting a couple comments from the jurors, one of the things that they expressed to me that they would like for me to say to you is that, you know, Mark, there's a lot of things that we've dealt with as a governing body that we didn't always see eye to eye on. But one of the things that they told me personally is that Kevin Mark's a man of his word. And let me tell you something, Mark. There's not a place that you can go throughout this Paris or even in this world and not have somebody say that about you and mean it and know it. And that's the type of person that you've meant to this parish, Mark. I mean, professionalism, Mark. They're bar none, Mark. You're the guy, Mark. When you want to look that word up, Mark, they're going to have your picture by it, man, because that's what you exuded throughout this entire parish, throughout this administration. And... A lot of us tonight are going to have some comments that we want to say to you, but just coming from me as this year's sitting president, I just want to say to you, Mark, you did it the best way, Mark. I mean, you've set a landscape and a road map for the people that's going to come behind you. And Brian, Brian's got some big shoes to fill, but you know what? As a governing body, we've got all the confidence in the world to know that you've been placed in him the right road map that he's going to get us through all of this, and we're going to be just fine. But I just want to say here tonight to you, Mark, and from all of us, we thank you. We love you. Words cannot express what we feel as a governing body. It's kind of hard to deal with 15 different attitudes. <laughs> Let me tell you something, Mark. That's, that's, that's pretty tough. But you know what, Mark? You found a way to give each and every one of us the answer that we were looking for. And you know what? 
that says a lot about you as a person. And we just want to give you this next award. Mark, let me tell you something. This next award we're going to give you, I know for a fact there's two national championship coaches that have received this award. And this is the Eagle Award, Mark. This is the highest award that you can present to anyone here in the parish. And we feel that you are more deserving of this award. And we just want to give this to you tonight, Mark, because you're going to always be our number one guy, Mark. Members at this time. Mr. Brain. Mark, I just want to say a few words and uh, really I just want to say one word. Consistency. That's what I've seen since I met you from day one. It's consistent. It's the same all the time. And I really appreciate the friendship that we developed. Uh, I appreciate you guiding me and directing me and and give me the, the, the wisdom that you have to um, help me on certain matters that, I, that that's come across. So I just appreciate you, and you're a good friend, and I appreciate you. Colleen, I, there's not a, any words to say. I mean, you just helped me from day one since I've uh, been a part of this jury. Uh, I've called you when I needed you, and you've giving me the answer I needed, and I just, uh, I love you, and I appreciate you, and I'm going to miss both of y'all. I'm going to miss y'all. So, and good luck with retirement. If y'all know a part-time job, I have some mores at the shop need to be cleaned up. <laughs> you can come hang out with Clay. Hey, hey there you go. <laughs> Thank y'all. I enjoyed working with y'all for these last five years. Thank you, guy. Thank you, Mr. Brain. Ms. Griffin. Thank you, sir. That was quick. Mark, I know I've been a challenge to you. <laughs> and I know, and I know. That's the understatement that, of the year. Oh, see there? <clears throat> but then I, I, I knew that you once told me that you like challenges. Yeah. yeah. So that was good. On a serious note, uh, I've learned a lot from you. I've never been afraid of anything. I was raised by a man, my father, because my mother died with childbirth. So I was always, never ever, guys, afraid. And when I would get uh, in a conversation with you that I really wasn't pleased about, and uh, we would go head to head, and when it was all over, even though I didn't like what you were telling me, I respected it because my father always told me, you take a man at his word, but most of all, the way he treats you. And you treated me with respect and dignity, even when I was difficult, for my constituents. And so I appreciate that. I've learned so much from you. So I appreciate that. And Colleen, I appreciate all that you've done for me, too. And it was always about the people that I represented. I thank both of you because you made me a better person. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Griffin. Thank you, Ms. Griffin. <laughs> Mr. Landry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, yes, same, same from here, Mark. I mean, I appreciate everything that you've done. And uh, I was, I might have been, no, I probably wasn't that difficult, I wouldn't think. <laughs> <laughs> I, I may have been. <laughs> I know I'm kind of hard-headed and I get my mindset on something that's very hard to, to change it, but it's amazing of how many times I would go in and visit with Mark about something and I was dead set on it, and then he, <laughs> he can come up with just something that I had never thought of. He looks at it a whole different way, and by the, many times by the time I left, I was on his side, and heck, he's right. I was <laughs> wrong again. But uh, you, really, you really did... Uh, bring that to the table that's for sure always a, a different way of looking at things or maybe sometimes we would be working on something and it seems like it was impossible to do and mark well, just hold let me let me think about that a little bit and he would always find a way and uh and we appreciate it and and you did you did it for the right reason 
whether we agreed or not. That, and that's, that's really the, the best part of it. If it's somebody that I disagree with, if I know that I, I disagree with them and that they're, they're being honest and it's, they're trying to do things the right way, hey, that's, you know, that's fine. I always thought about Brent that way when Brent was here. We disagreed a lot, but I always knew Brent, you know, he, he was doing what he thought was right, which, you know, you can't help but respect that. But um, I appreciate uh, everything that you've done. And, and I tell you, you know, I think you're probably the, have the most influence on this parish that anybody has probably had for the last 100 years. And, and that may be that far into the future. I don't know that, that people, the average person really realizes that, that, that maybe no, they don't keep up with things that are going on in the parish. But, I mean, you really have. You've had a, a, a big influence on the parish. And, and I thank you. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Mr. Landry. Mr. Andropont. Thank you. I basically said what I had to say last Friday, Mark, but the three words that really come to mind about you, one was tact, diplomacy, and well-informed on issues. Now, for a person to sit here and have to deal with 15 different personalities, you have to have nerve of steel. That's all I got to tell you. And you went through not not only this 15, but how many did we say the 63 or? 77. How many? 77. 77. Well, I was. <laughs> and, and the number of years that you've been here, and that says a whole lot for you. You and I go back a lot longer than before I even got here, and I had the utmost respect for you then. I have even more now today because I've learned a lot from you, and I'm not just saying these things, and I think you know that uh, uh, I'm sincere when I say this, that uh, You've been an inspiration, not only to me, but to my family as well. You really have. And Colleen, I, I don't know what to say about you, dear, except you were, you were kind of like the Ed McMahon to Johnny Carson. That, that's the only, <laughs> way I can, the only way I can describe you, that you were always there, always number two, but always had a smile. And, was, and it's hard to come to work every day with a smile on your face. I can tell you that. And, but you did that. And you greeted everybody the same. That's the thing and most respected about you, anything, is everybody was on the same page with you. Nobody got preferential treatment, and that says a lot for you. And that's not easy to do, but you did it, and I'm proud of you. And good luck to you. And good luck to you, too, Mark. Thank you, Francis. Thank you, Mr. Andrew Pond. Mr. Spell. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mark, I know uh, we've had a few disagreements, but uh, I would hope more agreement than disagreement. But um, I just want to let you know, uh, being, being a rookie and only served on the jury so far for two years, uh, I can speak uh, for those two years. It's very obvious that you have served the entire parish um, with your efforts. But I think it's very important that people of Ward 1 know that in my experience over the last two years, you have served that community as well and you have worked for them. And I think it's very important for people to know that. Um, and uh, there are just two words that, to me, sum it all up, professionalism and vision. And uh, I just want to express that to you. Thank you for your service to the people of Calcasieu Parish. And uh, Colleen, I'm just, I'm going to miss you. Um, when you answer the phone, my day gets better. So. Um, uh, I could go on for probably a couple hours, but I'm going to miss you. And I wish both of you the best and, and good luck. Thanks, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Spell. Mr. Farnham. Mark, although I've only been here for a couple of years, uh, I've known you for quite some time. When, uh, when I first ran for this office, I had some discussions with Mike, and he said, there's the most powerful staff that you could ever hope to deal with up there. And, uh, and he was right. Uh, it's a wonderful staff, but the staff starts with its leadership, and you're just the ultimate leader. So congratulations on your retirement. Good luck with everything. Colleen, uh, it's just it's been a joy to call up there and talk to you because as soon as you talk to you, you can consider it taken care of. You can just forget about it and go on about your business. So thank you for all your help also. Good luck with your retirement. Thank you, Mr. Farnham. Mr. Collins. Mark, I just want to thank you for all the help you have given me on this police jury. Every time I had a problem or anything I needed to know, I just had to pick up the phone and call you. 
and you'd lead me in the right direction, kept me out of trouble, and kept me on top with my constituents. And Miss Colleen, I want to thank you for all the help that you have given me. Every time I call, you answer the phone for me and answer the question for me. If Mark wasn't around, you'd answer the question for me. And I just want to thank you, and may God bless both of you all in your retirement. Thank you, Miller. Thanks, Calvin. Thank you, Mr. Collins. Mr. McFillin. Thank you, thank you Mr. Chairman. <coughs> Colleen, you know how much we love you, and you always were the lit litmus test to see if we should bring something to Mark or not. I, I've talked about that at your retirement party the other night that we had. Uh, we're, we're excited about your retirement because it's going to be a great time for you to spend time with your family and with David and, and, uh, and the kids and have a great time with that. But don't, uh, don't go too far because we'll miss you. I know you'll be back up here with us. Mark, <coughs> look at uh, what we've done in the past and, and through the, the years that I've had a chance to serve with you. It's, it's been tremendous for the parish. You've, you've showed me vision. Uh, you've, you've taught me sayings of rising tide lifts all boats and uh, many, many words of wisdom. One of the things that I just want to compliment you on is you're not leaving us high and dry. You're leaving us with a competent, tremendously competent staff of people that surrounded you. That's why this parish always works so well. Uh, you said it the other night, if you didn't do but one thing, you hired people around you that were the best, and you let them do their jobs. And I, I feel like that has left us in a situation in this parish that we're going to move forward. Yes, you'll be missed. We'll know you're not far away, but thank you for your wisdom and your skill sets that you've had, what you've brought to this jury and in, in our lives over the past few years. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Al. Thank you, Mr. McMillan. Mr. Scott. Yeah, I want to echo what Hal just said. The staff that you put around you, is why you've hardly ever heard from me. And Mark can tell you, I'm probably one of his favorite, because I've only been in his office twice, and once before I was elected, and once tonight, and that was about it. So, I mean, he's done a great job putting people around him, just like this police jury right here. You know, we all work together as a team, and he's done a great job putting people together that can get it done. And one of them was having Colleen underneath him to make sure that he helped get it done. So. Uh, I just want to thank both of you for your service and tell you good luck in the future. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you, Mr. Scott. I believe Mr. McMurray, does any, any other jurors have anything? I just want to say just one little thing. Mr. Scott. That I wish I was retiring with y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Love you thank you. Love y'all very much. Before you get started, Mark, you're not planning to do any door to door sales, are you? <laughs> he was. I, I was really worried y'all were going to outlaw that because that was part of my future plan. Um, full of brush salesmen. Before you get started, Mark, Mr. Size. Uh, I, I just want to say one short thing also. I'm, you know, I've only been here for two years, and it's been really two wonderful years. And like you say, Ms. Colleen, you have definitely been a, a joy to meet, to talk, to, to, I'm glad to know that I've met you in these years and you're a very beautiful person and keep up the good work, you know. Mark, uh, like I said, I've learned a lot from you and I've learned a lot of, of how, uh, how you work, you know, and how, and like you said, your passion for, for how you, you know, we, when we do our work and stuff. And what I, I used to like when uh, a lot of times you'll, you'll tell us, uh, uh, I work for you all, so I'm not gonna to tell you all what to do but then you'll come back and say, but you may not want to go behind door number two. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you, know you, 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 you lead us and you, and you, you tell us this and that, but at the same time, you also tell us, what, watch out for what behind door number two and door number one. So it was the professionalism of how you, how you did, the, how you got your message across was real well, well received and we appreciate it for both of y'all. Thank, Thank you very much. He, but he didn't say you were beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That might have been somewhat Thank disingenuous. You. Thank you, Mr. Sides. I just want to say one thing before you start, Mark. I want to thank you for your guidance, and I have to agree with Mr. Uh, Landry. There were times that I disagreed with you, and after meeting with you, I agreed with you and thought it was my idea. <laughs> but uh, I do appreciate that. I appreciate the, the two short years that I've been able to work with both of y'all. It's, it's been an honor. Um, this time thank you you have the floor well several things that, that, that have just been said first of all mr. Brame, I Bill McLeod stood up here one night and said that consistency a professor of his at Princeton said consistency was the vice of small minds so I, I, I guess I'm concerned if I if I was uh, overly consistent I, I don't know 
Um, uh, Kevin, there are probably a number of people in the parish that might see my picture an, a, a, a long, uh, alongside another word in the dictionary that wouldn't be the word that, no. that, that, that well you chose. Um, you don't do this for 34 years and not have some people unhappy about some things that you did. Um, Mr. Andrew Pont tact, I remember sitting in Ms. Gibson's ninth grade civics class at W.W. W. Lewis and she had a little quote on the bulletin board next, right where I sat, and it said, tact was the art of making people feel at home when you wish they were. <laughs> and so, so if that's, uh, if that's what I've had, then I'm, I'm glad. <laughs> I don't know how to take that, really. <laughs> 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 oh, I, I, you know, anyway, I, and yeah. Shannon, you, you, it'd be interesting to see your ability to convince some of your constituents that I really was their friend. I tried to be, but I, that, that might be a hard sell to, to some of those. Um, I, I have really enjoyed this job. I enjoyed it, being able to spend time under, under Rodney Vincent. During my time here, four of my five children uh, have been born. Uh, they are, um, we've, we've raised most of them. The little one's here tonight. Charlie's back there somewhere. Uh, I, I have to tell you, he was not overly impressed with y'all's discussions about culverts and house-to-house <laughs> -house peddling, I don't think. He may have had an opinion on it, but I don't think he was overly impressed with the debate. Um, I've, I've lost my mother and my father during my, my time here. Uh, so huge changes have taken place in my life while I've been here. But one thing that hasn't changed has been my commitment that remains today and will remain after I walk out of here next week, and that's a passion for local government, particularly for, for Calcasieu Parish. Um, we, we've had great opportunities, and most of them we have not squandered, uh, to make a positive change in, in people's lives uh, throughout the parish. And uh, that, you know, I think we could have a long list of things that today or better than they were before. Uh, and hopefully there's a blueprint there for even greater things yet to come that y'all will, will have opportunities to, to be a part of and to continue that, that process of making life better for the people we serve. And that, and that happens a lot of different ways. I mean, it, you know, you're the only parish in the state that's got 90 some odd percent of its roads hard surface. That just doesn't happen uh, anywhere else in the state. Uh, you're the only parish in the state that has separate funding for your criminal justice system and doesn't, you know, drain your, your general fund uh, to, to make that system work. Um, the, 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 you know, what y'all have been able to do and what your predecessors have been able to do uh, has been really remarkable uh, when you consider the, the state of parish government in the state of Louisiana. It's been several said several times that we didn't always agree with each other. Um, you know, nobody elected me to anything. You know, you, this, uh, the democratic system that, that we have works. Sometimes it's pretty ugly. I heard, heard one time some guy say, you know, democracy is a horrible form of government, but it's way better than whatever's in second place. Um, and and it's also been said that making laws and making sausage are very, you know, you don't really want to watch either of those two things happen. Uh, unfortunately, we've we have had to watch the health care <laughs> reform debate in Washington, and I think uh, there was a cartoon, I think, in today's paper that had it look like sausages coming out of the committee rooms there. But, but the fact that we have not always agreed with one another, I think, has created uh, the opportunity for a really good sound debate. And Hal mentioned this earlier during the discussion about the, about the covert situation, about good, sound, solid debate that takes emotions out of it but that tries to deal with the facts. That's, that is democracy and that's what makes it work. Um, so yeah, we, we haven't always agreed on everything. In fact, that, that's true of earlier tonight. <laughs> there couldn't be a better opportunity for that uh, than, than some of the actions taken earlier tonight. But, uh, but that, is, that is a democratic process and I, I can't thank uh, you and your predecessors enough for giving me that opportunity and of course Mr. Vincent first for giving me the opportunity to even be here in the first place uh, but to have the opportunity to to really maybe do some things that that made a difference in, in people's lives and, and I hope that we've done that 
Um, the other night, I, I, wanted, I thanked all my family for their understanding. A Ann has uh, suffered through 30, 30 and 45 minute discussions in the, in, in the aisle at Kroger uh, when we went in to go maybe buy milk and orange juice and you know, somebody was having a problem with the ditch in front of their house. And um, those are things that, um, that were fairly unnerving to her and she's put up with that. Uh, and I can't thank her enough for the support that she gave me by just not chewing me out all the time because I didn't tell them to call me at the office. Um, my, my kids have sacrificed uh, some things uh, that I felt I was sacrificing too because I wanted all, to be at every one of their ball games or their dance recitals or whatever else was going on, and I couldn't always do that because my schedule was dictated by and large by, by other demands with this. So um, I, I certainly want to thank them. I can't say enough about the staff. They, they are my second family. Uh, I think as evidence of the kind of place this is to work, is the fact that you look around your senior staff particularly, and it even goes further down than your senior staff, we've got people with 20, 25, 30 years of, of, of a career at this place. That doesn't happen a lot of places. Um, we have become a family here, and uh, that's the hardest part of this. I, I've, I have no regrets about making the decision. This is my time to retire. Ecclesiastes had it right. There's a time for everything, and, and, uh, and it's, time for, it's time for me to retire, but I'm going to miss this group of people that I see every day, um, particularly miss the smiling face that greets me every morning, generally with a cup of coffee and a, and a, a glass of water, and, uh, and, and all that goes along with being able to work with Colleen, somebody that has that kind of uh, compassion and, and competence and professionalism uh, is, is tough to leave behind. I do appreciate the comments that were made about the selection of people that I have hired, people like Brian. Um, I, I, I take a little credit for getting this guy to come on board and talking him into uh, moving out of the courtroom a little bit and coming here. I think that those of you that have been here uh, longer than 10 years, you know you can tell the difference uh, in, our, in, in the way that, uh, that things are done here from the legal point of view. So um, I, I thank you. I thank the members of, of this staff particularly. I thank my family. Um, and, and I thank God for the opportunities that I've, I've, I've been able to have here. Uh, look forward to a new future. I, one of the reasons I wanted to leave when I did is I thought Easter weekend was a perfect time to have a new beginning. Uh, those of us that you know follow follow Christian faith know that that's what Easter uh, offers us is a new beginning, and um, and I look I look for one of those, uh, and I look I look for uh, with it uh, with great anticipation. And uh, thank you for Kevin. Uh, you know, hey, Les Miles and Paul Maneri <laughs> eat your heart out. Uh, I got what they got, and I didn't have to win a national championship well, to do it. So I, I appreciate it very much. But I thank y'all, and I've, I've, I've said plenty. Thank you. Before we adjourn, Ms. Colleen, the floor is yours. <laughs> I think what I'd like to do first is thank all of you and the staff, the friends that I've made along the way. Um, it's, it's like Mark said, you know, we come in every day and I enjoy seeing everyone that I work here with. I enjoy seeing all of you on Thursday night, every Thursday night for all of these years. It's been just a real... It's been a great job. It, it's, I just don't have any complaints at all. And um, to be able to do that for as long as I have, that, that means a lot and it says a lot and you feel like you've really accomplished something. Um, all the guys' hard work for last Friday night, that was wonderful. All the hard work that went into that. The businesses, I think, that contributed to that and the food. And, um, um, the gifts that were given to us tonight and last week and the gift that y'all gave me to be able to take it and go to Ireland and England where my mom was raised, was born and raised. I've never been and so I appreciate those wonderful gifts and acknowledgments that everyone has given. 
and um, I've just it's been a great ride and I'm not going far matter of fact I'm moving into Mr. Landry's district and if I have a problem I can certainly call him unless we reapportion and I change the districts to maybe Mr. Brame or Mr. <laughs> Scott I'll be kind of right there in that way but um, we're not going far away and we're still part of this community my family and I appreciate all of you very 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 much and the staff thank you at this time I'll entertain a motion to adjourn I'll move. Mark, before we start, I noticed that you're doing some renovations to the little house in your yard. That's not your retirement home, is it? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, that's my number. That's my first son's going to be moving back here oh, for really? a while after he well. graduates from law school. So. <sighs> well, now I call the agenda committee. Um, Meeting to order for Thursday, March 25th, 2010. The purpose of this meeting today is to formulate an agenda for the regular meeting for the police bureau April 8th, 2010. We will pull item 27. Are there any other items to be pulled? Second. Take appropriate action to fill a vacancy created by the resignation of Mr. David L. Clark as a member of the Board of Commissioners of Ward 6 Fire Protection District Number 1. Mr. Clark represented District 11. Mrs. Trimmy is a liaison, and I would entertain a motion that we defer for 30 days in light of the fact that she's so not. Moved. So moved. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Any opposition? <clears throat> Any other items to come before the committee at this time? Move to adjourn. Yes, sir. I just want to remind everyone that we're going to have some refreshments afterwards. So please, if you have some time, please stay in fellowship with us. We would love to have you. Thank you, Chair. This meeting is now adjourned.